Okay, I think we might be streaming. Hold on a moment. Twitch.tv slash X and Shadow. I'm really hoping we're streaming because it would be a real pain in the ass if this didn't work after all that effort. Wait. 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 Oh, wait. Hold on. I'm getting an ad, which means I think we are actually streaming. Uh, hold on a moment. Uh. Uh. Um, okay, hold on. I just want to make sure I, there's a goddamn Destiny ad uh, playing. Um, and once that's over, I'll know if I'm if this thing is actually working or. Okay, cool. I'm actually I'm actually streaming. Awesome. Uh, hey guys. Um, uh, it's Ted. Uh, welcome to the to the stream. Um, so, uh, in case you're unaware of what's going on right now, um, I have uh, I just recently actually got a new capture device uh for those of you who don't know the technical uh issues behind um behind streaming essentially what the capture device does it it, it is the thing that allows me to stream it uh, connects my wii u to the computer and it lets me do the stuff that i uh, and it lets me uh, do stuff and uh, i got a new one it's called an avermedia and i have been told uh, by a good friend of mine, by Johnny, uh, that it was great for streaming. And so I figured that before just jumping into a grind fest with it and seeing what, and, you know, going by the seat of my pants, I'd test it out. And actually, I'm, I'm really glad that I did that because this would have been a nightmare if we, if I had just sort of went by the seat of my pants. But, um, yeah, um, I think we're gonna do a little Super Mario Maker um, stream. Uh, I don't need to look at those. We're gonna do a little Super Mario Maker stream just to test things out, and if it ends up being good, then what do you know? Maybe we'll get, um, then maybe we'll do more of these, but anyway, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get started quick on a, um, on a stream. I, I, I'm trying to see if we even have any, oh, we do actually have people watching. Awesome. So, anyway, um, yeah, so this is just, uh, for those of you uh, unaware, this is just a test stream for um, for my new Aver Media. I just, I kind of wanted to make sure that it was working. And, you know, I figured I also wanted to go over the creation process in Super Mario Maker because there's plenty of streams out there with people playing custom levels. That happens all the time. That's not interesting. I don't want to do that. What I do want to do, however, is talk about the level creation process. And I think that would be very interesting. So, uh, first things first, uh, I'm going to go to my course bot and show you guys some of my levels and show you the design philosophies I've had while making these levels. And this will be important because I will actually start making a level. Um, I'll, I will start making a level from the top. So, uh, anyway, um, I th I'm going to play what I think right now is one of my stronger levels. I'm going to play... Haunted Temple of the Goddess. This is a level that I created. I'm going to tell you about the design philosophy that went into it, and then after that, I'm going to go into the a little bit more detail. Uh, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about the level creation process. So that's why I'm calling this the Super Mario Maker Workshop because this is where we're going to learn how to play. We're, this is where we're going to um, we're going to um, this is how we're going to learn how to actually like. Um, oh shit, <laughs> this is how we're going to actually, uh, this is how we're actually going to learn how to make levels. So anyway, first things first, um, for this level, I started off, uh, by plopping a, a mystery mushroom right onto the character. You can do that if you want the, if you want the player to start off with a specific power up. In this case, I wanted the level to be themed around Palutena, so that's why I have Palutena plastered right onto her. Also notice how the beginning of the level is a safe spot. You don't want to kill your player immediately, or at the, uh, you, at the very least, you want to give them a, 
a chance to see what's coming up. Now, here we have a pretty simple jumping challenge over here. There's plenty of danger. There's uh, dry bones and there's uh, there's a name for booze on the ground, but I don't know it. Uh, but th yeah, so you need to make a jump and it is a pretty tricky jump. I made that on purpose. But once you make two jumps, you're in another safe zone here. You can't get hurt by anything. And that's uh, supposed to give you enough time to get through these boo buddies here the boo buddies on top uh, above mario right there those were just so that you couldn't jump up and skip this section right here uh the boos here that's mostly just to reinforce the fact that you can't go right because originally i didn't have that wall there and also it puts some pressure on you when you go uh left oh damn i am not doing well it puts some pressure on you when you go left in order to make this jump now again one thing that I think is very clear, especially in a slower paced level, in a faster paced level, reflexes can be more of a thing, but in a slower paced level like this, I made sure to have safe spots um, occasionally so that the player can see what's coming up next and, and plan a course of action before they react. So that's the first section of the level, pretty standard. This, I wanted to ramp things up a bit, so you come in and you see a whole bunch of Magic Koopas, and it's like, holy shit. Now, Magic Koopas, it's, it's frightening to see so many of them at once, and it does require quite a lot of dodging, but they take a long time for the for the to, to cast like their little PlayStation magic here. So you're actually not in immediate danger, giving you enough time to react and start climbing up the tower, which I think is very important. So you make it down the pipe, and you're in a different section. And this is the section where I started having a little bit of fun at the player's extent, uh, expense. It's a ghost house, so I have to dig with people at some point. So, you know, up oh, there's there's invisible blocks here. You got to make it past the invisible blocks. But, oh, look, there's a boo in them. Oh, no. And there's another boo. And there's another boo. Notice how I marked the location of each boo with a with a uh with a clock there on the underside now you don't have to do that but especially and you don't want to put don't put enemies in random blocks uh, just to be a dick um but here for example booze again there's no immediate danger i mean they do creep up on you and i actually got myself into a bit of a tizzy there um but they do creep out creep up on you but they're not an immediate threat because they do have to climb towards you so yeah oh i i missed uh, this section up there the you're supposed to climb up and again it's supposed to be a moment that scares the player because the boos shoot out at them but they stop immediately so again that's a good thing and here again it's just another it's a kind of a different take on something we've done before where the player knows that they have to hit the p-switch but they also know that there's a flying chain chomp down there and that's scary so it's a oh shit those those boos can chase after you i didn't even know that normally i'm going through a little bit faster but i am explaining things right now um so it's it's scary to see the the chain chomp down there so you got to plan a course of action and then hit the p switch run 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 and then you make it through and oh no now you're stuck and at this point you should really know that looking at booze keeps them from coming towards you so that's just supposed to be a little fun moment there again there you can have you can have some fun at the expense of your players but not at the expense <laughs> but not at the not with the uh not at, like but having fun doesn't mean immediately killing them you know it's more fun to it's better for the player to to give the player an experience where you just uh scare them that's way more important like because nobody likes to be instantly killed that's not funny to the to the player if the player sees something unexpected and then can get out of that situation then the player will be in on the joke and can laugh at it but if you're just going to be a dick to them that'll just make them upset i'm sure if you guys have this game you've encountered that many many times on on 100 mario challenge um and again like many other this is <laughs> <laughs> oh man i'm a dipshit um but i'm sure if you guys have super mario maker you've probably played plenty of uh, 100 mario challenge and you've probably played dozens and dozens and dozens of terrible levels and you don't want to add to that number okay so yeah you just want to uh make don't make something frustrating. You can make, well, you can make something frustratingly hard. That's okay. But it always has to be the player's fault that they die and not the stage's fault. So, 
Uh, when we get to the point of this stream, when I start messing around in the course maker, we'll start talking about um, what is and isn't fair. But for the moment, uh, <laughs> for the moment, we I just want to show off d design philosophies I use and what I consider to be one of my better levels. So this was a level I actually spent quite a long time on. Um, I think. I worked on it like an hour or two at a time over the course of a week. So yeah, some levels you can get a flash of inspiration from. This was a bad idea. <laughs> uh, some levels you can get that, oh, and now I screwed myself out of that, um, screwed myself out of that uh, mystery mushroom. That was intentional, I lie. Okay, but yeah, so some for some, so for some stages, like you can get the the flash of um, flash of inspiration. I'm going to the course editor just for just for for um, just for um, for time's sake. And also, I'm gonna give Mario Palutena just because um, just because I think that's okay. So okay, oh yeah. So we were right here. This is the next part of the level. I've been able to beat this level. Like a million times because this is my this is a level that i've created but yeah so anyway here we once you get through the section with the magic koopas there you're in this new section and again tutorial stage you got the thwomp crushing down and you know how that works before you move on to this next section where now you've got a thwomp crushing down these these bricks and it's dangerous so yeah um, you can either choose to go quickly or you can, uh, or you can take it slow. It's up to you. And again, wait, what, what's that? Oh no, it shot a chain chomp. See, the, the thing here is, is that it shot the chain chomp, but it takes several seconds for the chain chomp to actually get you. That's the difference between a prank on the player that's actually funny and a prank on the player that's, a, that's, it, that's mean. And again, we've got another one here where it, you see the cannons and you're like, oh shit, but the cannons take several seconds to fire, and that's what makes it humorous as opposed to that's what makes it humorous as opposed to mean spirited. Although some jokes can be funny when they're mean spirited. And again, just to bookmark the level, we've got one last platforming section with flying boos. I um, notice also how I put plenty of mushrooms here, especially in a level where you don't give them like the player like a fire flower or something like that you want to if you don't want them to have the fire flower you should make sure that there's enough you should make sure that there's enough uh mushrooms to go around so yeah so that's the level i think you know honestly i think it's a pretty decent level so you know that's but that's just me though uh we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go to the core spot and make a new we're going to go to a core spot, make a new stage. And I don't know if we're going to actually finish something today. I just want to talk about, I just want to talk about stuff that's, um, I just want to talk about, uh, stuff. So anyway, um, hmm, what course theme? Uh, we'll stick with the original Super Mario Brothers for now, just because that's the, that's the classic one. And I think it's probably better to, uh, start with something simple for something like this. So anyway, we'll start with what not to do in a in a Mario Maker level. What not to do? Don't do this. You're being a dick if you do that. Don't there have been a thousand different levels I've I've seen where oh, it's so funny we start the level off with 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 the thwomp and it kills the player immediately oh my gosh um you want to know what's also not fun that that's not fun especially if you like give them hammer brothers uh, these ones can have magic koopas um i'm just getting all of the bad all of the bad um oh this one can have chain chomps yeah I'm getting all of my bad design philosophies out here, and you can have fireballs. See, so, let's play my masterpiece of a level. Yeah, see? This is fun. And I mean, it is goofy to see, like, a million different chain chomps and, and, and hammer brothers and, and stuff like that coming out of nowhere. Like, it is funny. But, again, it's not inspired, and, you know, after the first day the game comes out, you actually want to start playing, like, good, 
you want to start playing good levels. So, you know, basically anything that's that's blatantly unfair, I think is in you know anything that anything that you can't see coming, you shouldn't deal with. You shouldn't put in your levels. Anything that's um, anything that's you know obnoxiously difficult. Like if you in your testing process need to try it like 500 times in order to win, uh, don't do it. Also. Please don't abuse hidden blocks. Like, if you had, let's say, for example, um, like, um, let's go, let's go to the flagpole real quick. Let's say the only way to to win this state to win this stage was you put like a million different uh, buzz saws up here, and the only way to win. Uh, hold on, let me. And the only way to win was if you put a hidden block with a with a star if you if you put a hidden block with a star like don't do that that's not funny okay you're you're thinking to yourself oh yes these people will never beat my level and then that's the thing nobody will ever beat your level if somebody looks it up on the course world they're just going to give up after a few minutes of of frustration and if anybody stumbles across it during 100 mario challenge after two deaths they're gonna skip so yeah you you here's the thing if you've ever played dungeons and dragons uh there's a um you're you're like the dm when you're creating a level and if you haven't played dungeons and dragons the dm is basically the person who creates the story and the adventure that the characters go through so it's not your job to beat the people who are playing the levels you don't want Okay, well, you, you don't want them to die, the character, the people to die, necessarily. You don't want them to die over and over and over again, because that's not fun. Your jo your enjoyment from making a stage should come from trying to make other people have as much fun as possible. So, with that said, how do we make a good stage? Well, there are many different interpretations of that. Some people have an interesting gimmick that they that they have um, in store. Some people, you know, want to make something solid. Some people want to make something wacky, you know. Personally speaking, I enjoy making, I enjoy making levels that revolve around interesting encounters. So actually, um, this would be a good chance for me to show off probably my most, um, my most successful level online, which was the one that I uploaded first, uh, second. Uh, this is the Gauntlet. Uh, this was uh, a level that I made on the first day of Super Mario Maker, and so there are some flaws in it that I acknowledge, but uh, my idea for making this level was essentially to make a boss rush, and um, not necessarily a boss rush is what I like to make when I'm playing my levels normally but i do like making levels that have a lot of interesting challenges in them like one encounter then there's a small break then another encounter there's a small break that's the kind of level i enjoy making the kinds of mario levels i enjoy playing usually uh, involve a little bit more of uh, uh platforming i think those are the fun most fun levels to play but i'm not really good at making those kinds of levels so anyway um I'll just show off this level and you'll see by seeing more than me talking. Anyway, but since this was a boss rush, I kind of wanted to emulate uh, something sort of like Mega Man where you had to choose which power-up to go with. So I gave players the option between the cape and the fire flower here. And so we're off. So you have to make a jump. And oh look, there's there's fi there's uh, there's uh, fire piranhas and you have to beat them in order to get past or you can use or you can use your your power-up. Uh, or you can use your invincibility frames, I should say. Um, I did. I did know that people would go back and just grab the um, grab their power up if they lost it. So that's why these muncher plants are here. They're there so that you actually so that like I know that people are going to go back for them, and I acknowledge that. But you do have to work for it a little bit. So it's also there because you're going to be a little bit more careful when you're landing than if you were just running. So you're not completely blindsided by the by the the, the fire piranhas. Next, we've got a Hammer Brother room. Um, again, this is uh, this is mostly just a matter of patience, or either a matter of patience for you, or a matter of going through as fast as you can. And if you manage to keep your power up, uh, either the Cape or the Fire Flower, it's really not a big deal. 
Um, this is the boo room, which seems to give a lot of people a lot of trouble. Um, again, like uh, this was mostly just a matter of, of patience. I want it. This is probably something I would change if I were to make the level again. I would probably move one of the these flying boos up a space. Uh, get rid of maybe get rid of the spinies. Um, I would just try to make it a little bit easier because I think this is one of the harder uh, sections of the level, and I don't think it's entirely fair. Now here we have the the midway point. And it's a Bowser Jr. boss. It's a Bowser Jr. mini boss fight, essentially. Um, and basically how I, I wanted to do this was I wanted to make it so that you actually had to fight. Because I do know I did know that a lot of these a lot of sections in this in my level, you could just um, you could just uh, cheese your way past with invincibility frames. And I didn't I did want I did want you to actually do some fighting. So how I accomplished that oh a Japanese person played my level. Uh, how appropriate. Um, but yeah, I wanted to make it so that you actually did have to do a little bit of fighting in this level. Um, and so... <laughs> okay, well, I, I, I died, but I, I did I died off of something stupid. So Okay, so you would take the clown car and you would end up here. Okay, and this is the halfway point of the level. If Mario Maker allowed for it, I would have uh, put a checkpoint here, but there are no checkpoints in Mario Maker. So, uh, so again, here this is uh, supposed to be a little bit of a break area because you know um, uh, I didn't want to overwhelm the players. So again, you can see what's coming. There's a chain chomp and there's there's fire bars. So you essentially have to make a pretty tricky jump, and I fucked it up. So yeah. Um, and then we've got this room. Oh, I forgot about this room. This room was supposed to be hectic, <laughs> is is the big thing. This this room was intended to be uh, a more hectic room because um because you know uh, there I had a lot of slow paced areas before this, but I did want to add a little bit of a fun randomness to it. So I used the um so I used the shiny spell uh, shell spiny shells. Sorry in order to have one maybe land on their head. And I think that, that that would give you an advantage. And I thought I just thought that would be funny. Now, if you have the spiny shell, if you manage to get it, that makes this section a lot easier. But I wanted to give you multiple ways to go through this section. So I had the, the pipe spout Goombas, which, you, which are either an obstacle if you're a more traditional Mario player and you just sort of ignore them. Or if you're familiar with how Super Mario World works, you can use them as projectiles, sort of like shells. And I thought that was pretty cool. And now here, I, I kind of, I, I, I used a Lakitu. And I, I'm ashamed of it because Lakitu's are assholes in Super Mario Maker, but yeah. And there we got, um, and you know, once you make it through there, you're in the, the, the back half of the level, the very end. These are all fire flowers because I wanted to kind of give the sense that, oh no, something's coming. And as you can see by those fireballs, it's Bowser. Now, you can just, it's, I, I went with Super Mario World for a number of reasons for this. Uh, mostly for uh, having the options in a in a offensive, uh, some options in an, with an offensive weapon. So like the none of the um, none of the other styles really had anything any other power up that was good for combat like the cape. So that's mo that's part of why. But uh, a happy coincidence, you can't uh, invincibility frame your way through Bowser in Super Mario World, like in New Super Mario Brothers U. So you do have to, um, so you either have to time your jump correctly or um, beat him with fireballs. So, yeah, and actually I think I fucked up. I did, uh, I made sure that every section could be, uh, could be beatable as small Mario when I was making this level. Um, just so that you didn't have any prop, just so that there wasn't any, um, so that like even if you had, like I didn't make anything that, it was necessary to i didn't make it anything that were it was necessary to make a hit i mean it would be hard to do it without getting hit but i i knew that this stage was going to be pretty tough so scattered throughout i littered some hidden blocks in with power-ups so here you've got a star for example and here you've got a cape now i also tried to have a pattern with these uh I also tried to have a pattern with these um, power-ups, and that is that, generally speaking, they're all to the left of 
uh, of the entrance. So, for example, right here, there's a Yoshi, and so on and so forth. So, really, um, I, I did do strenuous testing to make sure that you could beat the level without needing these extras. But they're there if you look for them. And it makes the level an awful lot easier. And I thought that that was a good compromise because you want the level to be hard. So you want, um, but you also want to give the player a break. And, you know, it's not truly satisfying when you know that you had to use a hidden secret in order to win. It's kind of like cheating. So, yeah, that's mostly just uh, a kind of an, a, an explanation of the kind of levels that I personally enjoy making. I enjoy making levels that are a sequence of challenges for the player to overcome um sort of like boss rushes in a in a sense um they're not always boss rushes in in the sense that they're always an enemy like for example an interesting challenge might be like i know i'm just tossing stuff out but like if i put a whole bunch of vines out and the challenge would be how to get across the vines like how about let's try to make something here uh um uh, da, da, da. Yeah, like for uh, uh, um, uh, like this would be a challenge, for instance. Like, I, I, I'd obviously expand upon it more. If I were making the level my if I were making a level that I actually wanted people to play but like something where climbing up the vines in order to reach the bridge that's a challenge to me like that's a challenge a, a little mini challenge that the player has to overcome and if the player did make it up there they'd probably have earned themselves a a mushroom for example that's something that I wanted to that's the kind of thing that uh, that I, I was talking about but of course that's only one uh, philosophy for level design you know, you can make a level however the fuck you want. So, uh, for instance, like, let's just fill in the ground here. Like, let's say you wanted to make a level where the intention is you want to run fast. Like, you want a level kind of like, I think it's 4-1 in the original Super Mario Brothers, where the intention is you want the player to platform through as fast as possible. So an easy way to do that is to have something indicating that the player can go right, uh... Um, to safety like let's put like a whole bunch of coins and uh, maybe a uh, and maybe like a few Goombas like this is not a particularly challenging section you know and so anybody adept with Super Mario Brothers <laughs> which obviously is not me um, anybody adept with Super Mario Brothers will oh god I am being awful um, anybody adept with Super Mario Brothers will probably just that's actually you know what for the beginning of the level that's too many goombas um but yeah so anybody adept with super mario brothers will immediately start you know gunning it at the beginning of this level because there's nothing really in their way there's a few goombas you know um and it so let's say you wanted to you know start having them platform then like well why don't we put out a mushroom platform uh Personally speaking, like, I prefer jumping from things like mushroom platforms or semi-solid, uh, or semi-soft platforms, uh, because that's just more interesting to jump to than, like, if we had just done this. Like, it might functionally be the same jump, but it's not as fun, I think, to jump from ground to, like, raised ground as it is to jump from the ground to a mushroom. Now, of course, this is just a, a style over substance sort of element to the level. But, you know, I think that that's just cool. So, yeah, it's just, um, so let's, let's plop a few mushrooms down. Um, that's too tall. Um, what the hell? I, I put two down? I, I don't, didn't think I did that. Um, so, yeah. So, we want... That, yeah, so that the, the theme of this level is we want to make something that the player will run through. Like, go as fast as they can through. So, we'll start off, and just for, just for safety's sake, if they mess up this jump, just this first jump, there will be 
there will be some uh, donut blocks below the first mushroom just so that they can save themselves if they need to. Um, but uh, after that, you know, it's 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 serious business. Um, now, coins are not necessarily enough to necessarily uh, motivate the player to move forward. So um, I think, hmm, what would be something that would motivate the player to move forward? Um, I think a chain chomp might be. Um, yeah, I think a, a chain chomp might. Well, hmm. No, but I don't want to just put that behind the player because as soon as the level starts, if they're not. Well, it'll also run the complete opposite way. Um, as soon as the level starts, the player's gonna. The player's gonna. It'll just kill the player. So, how about we do this? Where. Starting from, like, we'll have, oh, I know what we'll do. We'll have a, we'll have a pipe, we'll have a pipe have chain chomps. Yeah, so let's, so it starts down, and now we want to run for our lives because there's a chain chomp chasing after us. This might not necessarily be the best way to go about it, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, but just... Yeah, that might not necessarily be the best way to put it about, because that's kind of a mean trap for the very beginning of a level. Um, but you do want to have something that'll, but let's, okay, you know what, maybe it's just, you just expect the player to go fast, okay? So, see, that's, that's, that's relatively fun, a relatively fun platforming section, but it is also pretty easy, so... Now, that necessar isn't necessarily a bad thing, especially at the start of the level. You know, nothing's more frustrating in a Mario Maker level than having the first five seconds be difficult. It takes forever, and then you realize that that's only like the first fifth of the level. So, the first part of the level, let's just have that be relatively easy just to be nice to the player. Okay, that, that'll be fine. So, but, we do want to we do wanna ramp things up a little bit. So... You know, we'll start off with something easy to just to keep it from being too uh, from being too monotonous. We'll put we'll put some Koopa Troopas on that middle platform, and we'll put one Troopa. I uh, sorry, I just I like things to be symmetrical. Actually, you know what? We should we should swap this. Um, yeah. Okay. What the heck are you doing here? Yeah, so we'll have, so yeah, so this is the start of our very basic level. A lot of coins indicating, yeah, you can run fast. Some pretty basic jumps, and now we've made it to a safe spot. I think at this point, if the players made it this far, they've earned themselves a mushroom. You know, you, you don't want to shy away from power-ups in your levels, unless if you have a specific reason not to. Like the challenges not getting hit throughout the entire level. If, if it doesn't really matter whether or not they get hit, it's probably nice to be um, to be kind enough to them to let them have a mushroom, you know. Excuse me. Um, so yeah, and we'll throw in some we'll throw in some coins just for just for flavor. I could talk a lot about coins and how they're used, but you know. Uh, that's just a different topic. Now, just for some variety's sake, we'll have trees here. We'll have trees. Now, let's say we want a we wanted the player to go uh, pretty quickly through that first section. Of course, we're not punishing them for going slow. Maybe later we'll have a section where they're punished for going slow. But um, now, let's say we want a, an area where they're they're going to be challenged in a different way now, because unless if you're your core mechanic is really strong. You a, a traditional Mario level does switch things up uh, pretty frequently. Like they'll have a main idea for most levels, but they do they do um, have different. Like the level does have a, a pacing curve. So I think what might be fun in this section is um, to do something a little bit more unique with. Um, Let's do something a little bit more unique with uh, with Goom with Koopa Troopas, shall we? So, hmm, okay, so where the hell are the Koopa Troopas? So, here they are. Um, 
Yeah, so, okay, one nitpick about Koopa Tro about Super Mario Maker, you can't, when you're dealing with semi-soft platforms, I can't just tap down a Koopa Troopa like, like over here. Um, I have to make it over to the side and drag it over. Yeah, that's a really minute kind of thing, but yeah. Um, so, let's make something a little bit interesting. And you know what? You know... This is probably actually a good instance of where using Mario 3 might be a little bit more interesting. So, yeah, we want to... Actually, I know exactly what we're going to do. Um, we're not going to have Koopas here at all. Uh, we're going to make this... Um... Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to have a... We are going to have a... Um... We are going to have some warp pipes here, and damn it! Actually, you know what? The best way to do to do all this is to actually um oh shit! What the fuck just happened? Okay, damn it! So sometimes the 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 level maker can be a little bit clumsy. I I do admit that, and that's something that does need to be uh doesn't I think could be updated, but they did a fine enough job as, as is. So I'm not gonna. I'm not going to be too much of a dick about it. Um, it's always really nice to see people playing your levels. Um, but anyway, something interesting that we want to try, uh, that I think would be cool to try, is to have a section where you want to use shells to kick, en uh, to kick uh, enemies. So we're going to put a whole bunch of spike tops on these, on these semi-soft platforms. Um, and you and it's so it'll be very difficult to platform your way around and so instead what you will be um dude. yeah we're gonna put like a fuck ton of spike tops um so hold on a moment i'm just gonna get that done real quick doop, doop. i did not mean to do that uh okay so we've got a whole bunch of, of spike tops here like a fuck ton of spike tops so there's no way you're gonna jump past that that's just mean but what we will be doing is putting koopas into this into those shells so if you know your mario you pick it up actually hold on a moment uh this should be raised a small uh raised a tad so that those spike tops can't land in the land in the the koopa section there and actually thinking about it that should be a little bit bigger um also all this i think should be moved to the side of a tad just so that it's a little bit safer i think for the for the player um yeah i think this looks good um wait hold on i i lost a semi soft platform so so we're going to, yeah, okay. So anyway, you, you're, you see this, you see Koopas popping out of the shells and you see like a fuck ton of spike tops. So what you're going to do, oh shit. <laughs> There's also a time sensitive nature to it. Um, you take the shells and you kick them over again. This could be. Um, the purpose of this isn't to make the world's best level right now. This is just to showcase ideas. And you might have better ideas than me. I actually expect you guys to all have better ideas than me because I'm a dumbass. But, you know, that's kind of... You, you want to take an idea and iterate upon it. So, like, I, I just personally, I think it's a lot of fun when you knock down a whole bunch of... Uh, a whole bunch of enemies with Koopa shells. And in Mario, you have very few ways to attack enemies. Like, most of the time, you're either ignoring an enemy... Like, you'll... A lot of the times in Mario, you'll just straight up ignore threats a lot of the time. Just because it's not really worth it to to kill enemies uh, too often. So, giving you a... Giving you, like, a little section where you gotta kill enemies, I think, is a, is a neat little challenge. And... Just as, like, you know... The rest of the level is gonna be the, to the right, but... You know... Just for fun... If you make it all the way up to the top, um, no, I'm, if you make it all the way up to the top, we'll, uh, you know what we'll do? We'll put a, 
a pipe. And we'll put we'll make a bonus area. So obviously we'd 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 actually make this level like structured good, like we'd use the right kind of blocks and shit, but just for the purposes of getting the point across, we'd put a little bonus area uh there if you manage to make it all the way to the top or if you just want to continue on with the level you know we can do that and you know just to make it feel a little bit less safe we're gonna put um i'll stick with the white blocks we're gonna make it so that you jump on mushroom platforms from here on out so yeah so that's just the kind of thing that i'm talking about like you want to you want to design your levels either around specific a specific challenge in general or you just want to design it around different ideas that you have. That's basically just mostly what I'm talking about. It's mostly just about, you know, finding silly ways to have silly ways to have fun in in Mario. So that's just mostly what I'm talking about. Um So yeah, that's mostly just all I really wanted to talk about. Um I think, you know, probably the the best way to to close things out is to take a look at another one of my levels. Um one where I had a central idea in mind when I was uh, playing it, and it is right here. This is on a distant planet. This is a level that I made in order, inspired by Pikmin. And my theme for creating this level was to recreate the Pikmin experience as much as possible. So, obviously, you do that by having the Olimar amiibo. Like, you know, I, I had got this guy. I'm going to use him. Uh, but the other way I wanted to do that was by having a lot of secrets and hidden collectibles in the level. So, like, there, you know, I made a little spaceship because it's Pikmin, but if you jumped on this, this note block, you got a one-off. So that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Also, I use giant enemies because Pikmin. So anyway, yeah. So I wanted to have areas that you had to, like, kind of explore a little bit. And so you could either head to the right or you could climb up here where there's coins. And you could try to head o over to the right so hold on there we go and see if you do that you're rewarded with another mushroom if you got hurt trying to get up here and these are all coin blocks so yeah um so now we actually have to make a jump and there's a fire piranha plant there um i i really wanted to play up the giant enemies because again pikmin and pikmin a lot of the times you're you're a small enemy. There's a lot of coins up here. There's flying... I really liked using the flying buzzy beetles because those are kind of evocative of a lot of the t things you'll see in Pikmin, whereas background em elements and as enemies, you'll just see random shit flying around. So, now we have some... Now we have some flying... Now we have some more, like, legitimate platforming going on here with like the giant chain chomp and stuff and i did make sure to have enough i did make sure to have enough oh my god i am a dumbass <laughs> to have like a actual platforming like i did make sure to have enough uh oh i i made sure to ma have enough i made sure to have enough uh what's this called have enough um uh, like uh power-ups hidden throughout so that like if you got hurt you're not screwed so okay um oof. Yeah, so, like, again, I made a mistake. Um, here, this is just something silly I wanted to add, again, to, to as a reference to Pikmin. Like, you can just ignore these this this wall, but if you blow it up with the bomb rocks... No, it's just bomb. You can get a whole bunch of coins in there. And here we just, again, have another encounter with some giant wigglers. Um, but, again, like, hidden throughout, there's a whole bunch of secrets. And if you want to emulate Pikmin, you can just sort of search for them if you want. And um, I'm going to go over the biggest... I'm going to go over the biggest secret I had hidden in there, because it's actually one that I don't think an awful lot of people had found. So anyway, um, we're going to load up the play, the, the, the game again, the stage again, I should say. And we're going to, I'm going to show off the biggest secret that I had. Ah, oh, damn, I suck. <laughs> the, the biggest secret that I had hidden the, the level. So, um, now something, again, this isn't necessary to beat the level. As, as you can cl clearly see, the level's pretty easy as it starts, but... Uh, you might not know that if you stand on Buzzy Beetles, they fly. So, like, you might try to jump on them, like, to kill them and then find this out. But if you do that, you, you're you you're up here and there's there's a warp pipe. And there's also a 1-Up Mushroom. That's, I think, an Amiibo Mushroom. And you go down 
there's a secret underground area. This was a callback specifically to the caves in Pikmin 2, which I don't like, but I, I figured, you know, they're a huge part of Pikmin 2. I had to throw back to them in the level in some way. So, again, there's an obnoxious amount of treasure down here for you to find. But there's also Bowser. Yes, there's a Bowser boss fight. And I wanted to emulate... One thing that I wanted to try to emulate was the I was like the the experience of like actually throwing Pikmin at an enemy, which is why those shells are there, so you can quote unquote throw them at Bowser. But I also realized that that was a really boring because a giant Bowser takes like dozens of dozens of uh, shells to to kill. So I instead put a pal block there and made it a little like a little secret in order to find so yeah and then we got confetti and shit and so yeah that's basically um that's basically it you get two one-ups for making it through i believe i have another amiibo mushroom just in case you decided to say screw it and run through bowser which i also knew was an acceptable a thing that people who found that section were going to do anyway i also made this section like pretty difficult to get through but if you made it through, you're rewarded with a whole bunch of coins that you can run through. And also, that's the only way to get to the top of the flagpole. I made sure of that. So yeah, I just, I thought that that was, um, that my, I had a theme which was make the level feel like Pikmin. And I tried to accomplish that theme as much as possible. So yeah, so anyway, that's just the, the first, I just wanted to do a little workshop just to talk about my approaches to level design and things like that. If you have any ideas of how to do levels you know this was just only supposed to be a guide you know really basic stuff don't be a dick it's not about winning it's about making a fun experience uh try to iterate on ideas as much as possible you can have a bunch of small ideas you can have one huge idea it's really a very malleable game so yeah um i might do more of these where like i have a specific idea and i'm trying to make a course but i'm not sure um excuse me but yeah I just wanted to do this. I thought it'd be fun. But anyway, thanks uh, for everybody who came by to watch. Um, it The Aver Media actually is pretty good for streaming. I only have a handful of drop frames. Um, I've been able to stream in 720 without too much issue. And the audio desync is, it's like a second. So that's definitely nice. So, you know, especially can, I haven't really even needed to look at it too much. Um, like X split too much. So this was that was mostly what this was for. This was just to test uh, test the Aver Media. But anyway, uh, thanks you guys for watching. I'm gonna sign off now. Um, but uh, me and Catherine will most likely be back for the Grind Fest uh, later this weekend, and I hope we I can see you all there. So anyway, um, I'll catch you all later.